Hi, meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, December 6th. Quite an active weather pattern, a lot to talk about this morning. Really, it's kind of an interesting weather pattern for the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S., in that it's an overall warm weather pattern right now. In fact, today will be uh, very mild for this time of the year. Highs reaching perhaps 60 plus degrees. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, maybe closing in on 60 in New York City ahead of a strong cold front. That strong cold front will produce some powerful wind gusts later in the day and in the overnight hours. Ahead of the front, those winds will be from a southwesterly direction, gusting past 40 miles per hour or so up and down the I-95 corridor region, and then later tonight from a northwesterly direction, past 40 miles per hour, bringing in some much colder air in the overnight hours for the mid-Atlantic region. Then at midweek, we have kind of a weak low pressure system that looks like it'll slide from the south central states to off the mid-Atlantic coastline, likely to produce some snowfall in the mid-Atlantic region. Could even have some accumulations. I'm thinking right now on the order of anywhere from as little as a coating to as much as a couple of inches. Still some disagreements amongst the computer forecast models over this midweek system. We'll talk about that over the next few minutes. But again, very mild today, then very strong wind gusts later in the day and tonight. Much colder tomorrow and some snow is possible at midweek. Then it turns very warm again at the end of the week. We might be pushing 60, 65 degrees again on Saturday ahead of the next strong cold front. Uh, that, that 60 to 65 in the D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City corridor, even possibility of some strong thunderstorms with that weekend cold frontal system. Let's start off by kind of looking at the big picture here in terms of snow cover. We're looking at a top-down view of the northern hemisphere for snow cover right now uh, as we uh, reach the, uh, the end of the first week of the month of December. First of all, Alaska, right in this area right here, has been suffering through some intense cold and really still no let up. They're a little bit warmer today, but that's associated with a heavy snowstorm in at least parts of uh, Alaska. A lot of snow cover all the way into the northern part of the U.S. The U.S. is really the one area in the northern hemisphere that's below normal in terms of snow cover right now, but Canada is pretty well covered, Greenland's pretty well covered, and across the North Pole, places like Siberia, uh, northern part of Asia, pretty well covered right now as well. So all in all, quite a, quite a healthy look to the snow cover right now. Scandinavian countries completely snow covered, and they've been experiencing some intense cold as well over the last several weeks. Well, in fact, let's take another top-down view of the northern hemisphere to take a look at those temperatures right now. I've talked about intense cold in uh, certain parts of northern hemisphere, like Alaska, for example, Scandinavia, for example. And the reason I focus in on these areas this time of the year, even though they're so far away from the U.S., Alaska, Scandinavia, when you see intense cold on the weather map in early December, it definitely warrants some attention even in the U.S. because all it'll take is a little bit of a change in the upper air pattern to pull some of that cold air, that intense cold air, down from Alaska, for example, into the uh, Canada and then into the U.S. And certainly are some signs that the pattern could change later in the month of December into January that could pull some of that intense cold air down into the U.S. So it certainly uh, warrants some attention right now. Here's Alaska right now, and at the 850 millibar lef level, actually a little bit above normal, just because they're associated, that's associated with actually a blizzard right now, and some intense cold is coming, and it's been an intense cold pattern. Fairbanks yesterday, I think, hit 12 degrees above zero, uh, their highest temperature in about a month. Now watch what happens. Well, before we, we, we move on from there, notice intense cold continuing in St Scandinavia. A couple of weeks ago they recorded their lowest temperature throughout the Scandinavian countries in decades uh, since uh, I believe it was 1980. And so so w watch these areas and a lot of cold air now pouring into the central part of the U.S. So let's just move forward here. First of all kind of focus in on Alaska here. They, they turn colder than normal and that cold air mass spreads into the northeastern part of the country over the next couple of days. And an interesting thing about the cold air over Alaska, the Aleutian, I, uh, Aleutian Islands, it actually 
last week spread southward into the Alaskan, uh, the Hawaiian Islands, and this next air mass will do the same. Some of you may have heard about blizzard watches on the higher elevations of the Big Island, Hawaii, and indeed that's as a result of some of this intense cold air uh, modifying obviously quite a bit over the Pacific Ocean, but nonetheless reaching the Hawaiian Islands, and indeed this it looks like this pattern will repeat over the next week to 10 days or so, but a lot of mild air still remains over the central part of the U.S. In fact, I mentioned up front, very mild today and then very mild again by the end of the week in much of the eastern U.S. And in fact, next week looks like quite a mild week uh, uh, across much of the U.S. for the, uh, what will be almost the middle part of the month of December. Well, let's focus in on the continental U.S. Uh, warm today across the eastern third of the nation. Again, 65 degrees in D.C. this afternoon, probably not that far from that uh, level in the Philadelphia area, maybe 60 degrees in New York City. Winds will become a major factor. Ahead of the front, they'll be from a southwesterly direction, perhaps gusting up to 40 miles per hour or so later this afternoon. And then behind the front in the overnight hours, northwest winds. Uh, gusting past 40 miles per hour or so up and down the I-95 corridor. Here is the cold front as we begin the day here on Monday. Not a heavy rain event, but there certainly can be showers at just about any time. Cold air spills into the mid-Atlantic region overnight tonight, and it remains on Wednesday. And I uh, talked about the fact that it's unlikely that this kind of a cold air mass would retreat in just a 48-hour time period from Monday night to Wednesday morning, even less than 48 hours. And that's why I, I tend to favor the idea of some frozen precipitation, either snow or sleet, in the Mid-Atlantic region with this system. Again, it does not look like a powerful storm by any means, but there can be some uh, snow on Wednesday, especially Wednesday morning time frame. That cold air tends to stick around right into Thursday. But then a big warm-up coming to much of the U.S. It really uh, peaks in the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., during the day on Saturday. This is the Saturday morning forecast map, and again, Saturday could be a day, temperatures way up in the 60s, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, maybe even some strong thunderstorms as yet another strong cold front uh, pushes to the east, and it looks like that will arrive for the latter part of the upcoming weekend with another cold air mass moving in. This is the Sunday morning forecast maps are big changes between Saturday and Sunday in the eastern U.S. Well now let's take a look at the 500 millibar vorticity field. We'll talk about the Wednesday system here and what we'll be watching over the next a day or two. It's not completely set in stone because there's still some uh, dis discrepancies between the models. This is the upper level system associated with that cold push of air that's pushing across the upper Midwest right now through the Great Lakes arrives in the mid-Atlantic region in the overnight hours. You'll know it. The northwest winds will kick in and temperatures will drop sharply from the 60s today to near 30 degrees late tonight, early tomorrow uh, in the uh, I-95 Carter region. Here we go. And then we have a cold and dry and much less windy day on Tuesday. This is the Tuesday afternoon forecast map. And then we go into the morning hours on Wednesday. You kind of see the vorticity here is rather stretched out. Not a bowling ball by any means. Not a, uh, And that will result in a relatively weak low pressure area. It uh, tries to intensify a little bit by later in the day and Wednesday night. This is something we'll have to watch out for, but again, not a real concise area of rotation in the upper part of the atmosphere. Hence, relatively weak system. I'm, again, I'm thinking anywhere from a, as little as a coating uh, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, to as much as maybe a couple of inches. And that goes for the Delmarva Peninsula, southern New Jersey as well. In fact, there's some reason to believe that the, uh, the area from D.C. to Delmarva to southern New Jersey could end up with even more snow than north of the Mason-Dixon line uh, in this setup on Wednesday. Stays cold on Thursday, but then again, much milder. Uh, air arrives, you kind of see a little bit of a ridge popping here by the time we get to Friday. And Saturday will be the day that could be very, very mild, somewhat similar to today, today 
with very strong southwest winds on the front side of a strong cold front. Look at this system. This is a very active frontal system, I think, uh, will cause some perhaps strong to severe thunderstorms, somewhat unusual for December over the upcoming weekend, and some of that thunderstorm activity could move into the Mid-Atlantic region later Saturday and Saturday night, sharply colder by the time we get to Sunday. Well, let's now walk through the zero-z run of the GFS uh, for the next several days. Now, keep in mind, this particular model is the most bullish on the snowfall prospects for Wednesday. It's an outlier. Uh, it's been sticking to its guns, the GFS here, with uh, more snow than the other models. And by the other models, I mean the European model, the Canadian model, the UK Met model, all uh, substantially less than what we'll see here in the GFS. But uh, again, I'm going somewhere in the uh, coding to a couple of inches range right now for Wednesday, but stay tuned for updates. Here we go. This is the forecast map for late today. And again, a powerful frontal system with strong gusts of wind certainly past 40 miles per hour on the table later today and overnight tonight. And that will be a shift in direction from southwest strong wind gusts later today to northwest overnight tonight. Possibility of some damage to tree limbs, so we'll have to watch out for that. Not a heavy rain event, but there can be a shower at just about any time. Then, as this high pressure system edges into the mid-Atlantic region, winds die off. Uh, very noticeably, much less windy on Tuesday. Cold, dry, high temperatures instead of 60 plus degrees today, closer to 40 degrees tomorrow afternoon. And then we have the weak low pressure area. Not so weak on the GFS here, but it does put out a decent amount of snowfall, more so than the other models. But again, I do believe accumulating snow is on the table for DC, Philadelphia, New York City late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Could mix with sleet or rain at times, but it's generally a pretty cold setup here and probably leading to more snow than anything else, even in the I-95 corridor region. The question at this point is how much. I'm thinking maybe a coating to as much as a couple of inches or so. We'll focus in on uh, the new model runs later today and, of course, going into the day on uh, Tuesday. That pulls off to the south and east of, of the I-95 corridor region keeping us in the colder air. Notice high pressure, the key high pressure to the north that helps also to lock in the cold air in the northeast U.S. I'll be focused in on uh, high pressure to the north for any potential winter storm during the upcoming winter season. Stays cold on Thursday. Not, uh, not windy though. And then Friday starts to turn much milder. A warm front could produce a mixed precipitation on Friday and then again it turns uh, very mild on Saturday, kind of a repeat performance of today. Strong southwest winds, much milder conditions on Saturday ahead of the next strong cold front. This cold front could produce some decent rainfall, maybe even some strong thunderstorms in the mid-Atlantic region. Then it turns much colder behind it, maybe a change over to snow in the mountains, certainly uh, to the central Pencil Pennsylvania and the central and western Virginia, for example late Saturday night going into the day on Sunday, then sharply colder on Sunday. So an active weather pattern, very mild, a lot of strong winds later today and tonight, even the potential for some damaging wind gusts uh, as the uh, cold frontal system arrives later today. A, a much quieter day on Tuesday, and then uh, some snow is likely late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, into the day on Wednesday. Could mix with sleet or rain at times, but uh, certainly the chance of uh, some snow on Wednesday at midweek. Stays cold on Thursday, much milder again in the mid-Atlantic region at the end of this particular week. That's it for now. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.